in Chilliwack Hope. The, just a reminder of what we are actually discussing here today, there's a motion that says that given that the cost of government is driving up inflation, making the price of goods Canadians buy, and the interest they pay unaffordable, this House call on the government to commit to no new taxes on gas, groceries, home heating, and paychecks. It's a pretty simple motion, Madam Speaker, and basically we're, we're asking this government not to make things worse. They've already got us to where we are today, where the price of gas in my home province of British Columbia, my hometown, is $2.25 a litre today. That means that a student driving a Honda Civic has to pay over $100 to fill their tank to get to school. The cost for a mother to fill up her SUV is over $135. And a contractor filling up their pickup has to pay over $250 just for the fuel to get to work to perform the duties that they, uh, they perform in our community. In my community, that's often agricultural work. It's work done uh, in the construction industry, work that can't be done with a Prius, work that needs to be done with a truck, and, and my community is rural. It's a community where there is not a lot of rapid transit options. There's long distances between places where that you need to go. But the Liberals want to make the cost of gas, which is $2.25, a record high, they want to make it worse. They proposed in next year, next April, to triple the carbon tax. Now, BC has its own carbon tax. It has been a failure on every level. It has not reduced emissions. It has increased the cost for everything in British Columbia. And unlike some of the other provinces in the country, there is no federal rebate. The money goes to Victoria to spend as they see fit. They give some of it back in rebates, but the rest of it goes into government coffers, which is just like the uh, parliamentary budget officer, the independent parliamentary budget officer, who has indicated that for 60% of Canadians, they pay more in the tax than they get back in the rebates. Yep. I would anticipate in British Columbia, it's at least that bad, Madam Speaker. But this is what the government wants. They pay lip service every once in a while. They pretend that they care about these high gas prices. But actually, that's what they want. They want the prices for Canadians to go up. They want people driving their aged parents or grandparents to doctor's appointments to pay more for gas. They want moms and dads who are taking their kids to after-school activities to pay more. We heard it in this House earlier this week. It's a market incentive somehow. They're trying to incent people to drive less. Well, in my community, you have to drive to get from place to place to place. They disrespect rural Canadians. They disrespect people that need to drive to get from A to B. They also disrespect, quite frankly, people that need to heat their homes. To tell a senior that we're gonna drive up the price of your home heating oil, whatever that, your home heating, whatever that may be, natural gas, furnace oil, etc. We're going to drive that price up. We're going to triple the price of the carbon tax, driving up that price. And maybe you can just do without, maybe just turn the heat off. You can, sh seniors can shiver so that these guys can put more money in government coffers. It's unacceptable, Madam Speaker, and we're calling on them to stop making it worse. There's articles out that we should all be aware of and we should all be seized by. BC soup kitchens, food banks struggling with increased demand and decreased donations. We heard this yesterday in question period where the member for Barry Oramadonte indicated that uh, former donors to the food bank had become clients. And we're seeing that according to Food Banks BC, the number of new clients accessing its 105 member hunger relief agencies has increased 50% between December 21st and March. We're also seeing that the majority of Canadians are making changes to their grocery store habits among higher prices. Almost a quarter, according to Bloomberg, almost a quarter of Canadians are cutting back on how much food they buy because of higher inflation. This is more prevalent among female shoppers the moms, the single moms in many cases, 
with 29.6% of them buying less food compared to 18% of men who are making that choice. Not a choice, they're forced into it, Madam Speaker. And what do we see? We know that when the price of fuel goes up, which the government wants it to, that is their policy change, that is the effect that they desire. When the price of fuel goes up, the price of transportation goes up, which means the price of the goods that need to get to a grocery store go up as well. We're already at a 40-year high in grocery inflation, up over 10% year over year, growing at a rate that's 40% or a 40-year uh, high. Not since the 80s have we seen these numbers. And the response of the government should simply be to stop making matters worse. Stop raising the carbon tax. Stop taking more money out of the pockets of workers through increasing taxes on their paychecks, which is what they're planning to do on January 1st. Mm -hmm. And I've heard these Liberals now say, that's not a tax. These aren't taxes. Their website says it's taxes. The Government of Canada's website lists these as taxes because they result in lower take-home pay for Canadians. Right. Paul Martin thought they were taxes. Paul Martin thought they were taxes when he made it a priority to make the country more, uh, more efficient, more competitive. He said payroll taxes kill jobs. They drive down competitiveness. He got it, but he wouldn't recognize this Liberal government because they have abandoned all of their fiscal anchors and have completely... Where's the Martin, Where's the Martin Liberals? Thank you, Madam Speaker. I know that that member doesn't seem to care that the uh, price of food has gone up for Canadians. He laughs when I bring up things about food banks. He simply can't stand to hear the truth, and he wants to make it worse, Madam Speaker. The member for Kingston and the Islands wants to vote for, for higher gas prices. He wants to vote for less money in the pockets of Canadians. He can defend that, Madam Speaker. I'll defend cutting taxes and holding the line for Canadians. We've seen time and time again. And if he's not hearing from his constituents about affordability, that means he's not listening, which would put him in a good company with this Liberal government. Yeah. Because all of us on this side of the House are getting messages like I have that says budgets were tight and money was short before. And now with rental prices almost doubling, gas higher than we've ever seen, grocery prices increasing, it is getting impossible to afford the bare necessities. Having a child, I'm not left with many options. I already have a second job. Living in my car is not an option, and moving back with my parents also would not work, so what else can I do? Will there be any solutions? I know I'm not the only one struggling. For this constituent, the solution is not to have more money taken off of her paycheck. The solution is not to have more money taken away from her when she has to fill up her car to take her son to school. She's already talked about she had to drop out of university because the affordability was so bad under this government. Another constituent says, my husband and I work full time at great paying jobs and we're still struggling. We can hardly afford groceries because of the costs rising in BC. The fact that families cannot even purchase groceries without repercussions is astonishing to me. We're dual income and we struggle. We don't spend on anything but the bare minimum necessities, and even then, sometimes we try to do without. People are struggling, and this government is threatening to make things worse. They are set to raise taxes on paychecks on January 1st. This motion calls for them to to stop that. They're set to raise prices on gas, groceries and home heating in April. We're calling on them to stop those tax hikes. We will be voting to protect the interests of Canadian workers and Canadian families and leave more money in their pockets because they know how to spend it better than this wasteful Liberal government. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Member for Fleetwood Port Kells. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The member from Chilliwack comes from a rural area, so he knows what a load of meadow muffins looks like. And that's what he's just delivered. Listen, in British Columbia, the revenue from the price on pollution goes to reduce taxes, income taxes. We pay the lowest income taxes in the country to British Columbia. That's one. Two. There has been no increase in taxes on gasoline, so how does he explain the fact 
that gas prices are what, 230 headed for 250? I would suggest to the member that British Columbians and Canadians are facing the same situation as Western Europe is facing with Russia, that the oil companies are gouging us, and the sooner we cut these guys out of the equation, the better for everybody. The Honourable Member for Chilliwack uh, Hope. Uh, Madam Speaker, I, I again would suggest that that member for British Columbia uh, is not listening to his constituents. They are struggling like my constituents are struggling. And for him to say, we've never had it so good, 225, you know, what's the big deal? It doesn't matter. Uh, and, and we're going to raise the price. That's what the Liberals are promising to do. We will triple the carbon tax, which will make 225 $3 under that member's plan. And he can go ahead back to Fleetwood Port Kells and try to sell that, M Madam Speaker. I will stand up for the people of Chilliwack Hope and demand that these taxes not be raised. Yeah. Yeah. Questions and comments. The Honourable Member for Berti Masquinanger. Thank you, Madam Speaker. We've heard all sorts of things t today and as last Tuesday as well. We're kind of hearing the same things. How do you take this? Is the co my colleague aware that oil companies form a cartel that set prices, and if we lower pr taxes, they're just going to up their profit margins? You just have to look at the current situation. If you analyze the figures, you see that their profit margin has risen. So it's not just the government's taxes. It, we have to redistribute this money to people in need. I'd like to get an answer on that, because I've been trying to discuss this several times, and I don't get an answer. In the past, the Conservatives seem to approve an increase in OAS for people over 65. We need to increase the life uh, style of people who are on fixed income. I don't want to hear populism. I want them to answer my question. Do they agree to increase old age security for people who are having a hard time buying their groceries today? Yes or no? Well, Member for Shilawak Hope. Well, uh, Madam Speaker, I'd like to thank my colleague for his question. Of course, he's wrong about the, uh, the issue with gas prices. We saw when governments across the country cut uh, sales taxes or gas taxes in places like Alberta, the prices plummeted overnight. The price per litre plummeted for people in those regions. And people in regions like mine, we, we had another motion where we tried to get the GST cut on fuel and suspend the carbon tax. And of course, the Bloc Québécois, the NDP and the Liberals all voted to keep gas prices nice and high because that's actually what they want. You talk about the, the standard of living for seniors. In my riding, seniors who drive to see their grandkids or drive to their doctor's appointments are paying $2.25 a litre. He wants that price to go up. He'll have to come through the Conservative Party to make that happen, Madam Speaker. Yeah, yeah. The Honourable Member for Cavishan Malahat Langford. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. You know, last November, uh, that member's riding was devastated by an atmospheric river, which uh, resulted in billions of dollars of damage right across BC. So I'm just wondering when Conservatives will start talking about the inflationary effects of climate change. And secondly, Madam Speaker, if you're going to talk about the rising costs in food and in fuel, but completely neglect the profiteering that large corporations are making off the backs of working families, that is some extreme cognitive dissonance. Will that member stand up for his constituents, join with the NDP, and call out corporate profiteering to make sure that we are actually helping families? Member for Shilawak Hope in 30 Thank seconds. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And you know what would have helped in my region, in the Fraser Valley? Would have, uh, a rising, a, a raising the dikes, Madam Speaker, not raising the carbon tax. Exactly. We could have used uh, multiple governments, including the BC government, the NDP BC government, had failed to invest in the infrastructure necessary to protect our communities. So my constituents are tired of hearing about fancy conferences around the world where they discuss raising the price of everything. They want to actually see investments in infrastructure that will protect our community. That's what Conservatives believe in. We don't believe in raising the price of everything through a carbon tax. Here, here. Resuming debate, uh, the Honourable Member for Whitby. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, and before I begin, I'll just uh, let you know that I'll be sharing my time with the member for Kingston and the Islands. Um, I also 